Simple Cyber Defense Online Shopping Series, Episode 1, Online Tracking. Interview with Avoid the Hack. Welcome back to the Simple Cyber Defense. In this episode, we're uh, greeted with a guest from Avoid the Hack, and we're going to be discussing online tracking. So, my name is Carl. I'm joined with... Hi, this is Ahmad. And we're going to get started right now. Okay. So, could you give us, like, the elevator pitch, uh, basically telling us who you are and experiences with online tracking? Um, well, my name is Ashley. I'm the founder of Avoid the Hack, avoidthehack.com. Um, I work in OSINT. Um, I'm a contractor. Okay. Uh, can you tell us exactly what OSINT is for those who don't know what it is? So it's in a very, in one sentence, it's using the internet to find information on a given target. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not like you're employing a whole bunch of special tools that may only be available to certain people or only certain people know how to use. It's just using the internet and the public databases, public tools available to everybody to mm -hmm. gather intelligence. So you said target, the target be an individual, an organization, what would it be in your, in your realm? It can be anything, really. It can be an organization, it can be a person, it can be, yeah, that those typically are the two things, right? Um, in a way, it can be a topic. Um, what are they saying about this topic type thing? Um, what are the opinions on this topic? That's important intelligence. I think a lot of people don't realize. Like, what is what is the general consensus? Not necessarily from the public, but from public outlets about a specific topic. Okay. And who would be interested in gathering information like this, and why? Everybody. <laughs> Everybody. Um, in in your capacity. In my capacity, um, I, 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 everybody, like every, every, like it's, so the information's out there, but what everybody wants um, as a customer is they want it packaged together. So you need to synthesize the information in a way that it's can be easily found. So typically that means putting it in not necessarily a report, but in a way where, okay, this is what I found, boom, 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 without them having to do the legwork themselves. So it's really mm -hmm. synthesizing it and making it presentable, making it digestible. There's a big one. Um, making it accessible. Those are kind of the key points. Okay. Well, a lot of people... Uh, when I talk about online tracking, they say the following term, I have nothing to hide, so why should I care about tracking? What would you say about that? The argument is flawed, this first yeah. thing that comes to mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's really flawed. Um, I think we've been conditioned in recent times to kind of associate privacy with having something to hide Whereas if you look up the definition of privacy, there's not, it, hiding isn't really a synonym, but it's been drilled in our heads that if you want privacy, then you have something to hide. So I think that's the first thing to throw out. That kind of throws out the question because just because you want privacy doesn't mean you have anything to hide. And to the people that have that argument or that is their argument, give me access to your phone. Like putting your passcode, um, let me see your messages, let me see your emails, including that secret email you have, because I know you have it. Mm -hmm. um, let me see your contacts, let me see what apps you use, let me see your screen time, let me FaceTime your friends, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, g give me unfettered access to your phone. And a lot of people balk at that, because they're like, well, you don't need, you know, this is my business, what I do on my phone, you know, that's mm -hmm. my business, I pay for it. Okay, well, that is what the apps on your phone kind of do, the ones that are heavily tracking you. 
that's literally they when they ask for permission to your contacts you know they're not just doing it so you can invite them to the app they're doing it okay this this device knows this device they're linked okay. so then then it's just just feeding that machine um to the people that say well you know i don't really care about my phone i don't have a lot of information on my phone okay then let me put a gps on your car or on your backpack mm-hmm. let me know where you're going let me um let me be able to check in on your location anytime I want. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people balk at that. You don't need to know where I'm going. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I, I just, you know, I, I, that, that, that's, that's unreasonable. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. well, the phone in your pocket, that's what it does. Yeah. Oh, well, I turn location services off. Okay, we can triangulate <laughs> the cell phone towers. It's not, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not that hard. Um, that, that usually, uh, kind of if they're open to it yeah if they're open to it right you're not going to be able to change everybody's opinion no but yeah so those are usually my counter arguments -arguments. so how would you define online tracking then um it's a big umbrella many different categories fall under it um and because of that, it comes in many, 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 many different forms. Um, I guess most people are familiar with cookies. Mm-hmm. Some people might be familiar with super cookies that are set by ISPs, um, which internet service providers, so like Comcast, um, anybody that falls under that umbrella, there's a whole bunch around the country. Um, I define it personally in two parts. Um, first part is it's a technology or method that's designed to track your activity um, and other, I guess you can say intimate details, such as the time that you might have accessed a website or a web service or an app and the frequency of what you do it across different website services and apps. And in some cases, it can go offline where like you go into a coffee shop and all of a sudden like get all these ads for coffee and you're like, I just went to the coffee shop. Like I didn't, <laughs> mm-hmm. I didn't search coffee, you know? Um, and the second part is that many online tracking methods also seek to collect identifying information about your identity and your device. So they pretty much want to tie who you are, to what you're doing, and in a way how you're doing it and in even some cases why you're doing it because then they can package all the information together and sell it off to the highest bidder okay so would you say that online tracking is a way to make businesses products better and to also serve you ads that are more tailored to your relevant interests I mean, I'm sure that's a small part of it. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, it's a very small part of it. Um, but I always kind of try to break it down into two. So you have like surface level tracking. This is typically the tracking you can opt out of, um, mm-hmm. or they let you opt out of. Or let um, you think you can opt out of. <laughs> or let you think you can opt out of, and. Then there's also the deeper level tracking that is usually embedded in the terms and conditions and the privacy policy. And it's pretty much says, if you want to use this product or service, you're going to abide by these rules. And the number one example of that, that I think is a shiny example, not in a good way, is Windows. Yeah. Specifically Windows 10. Um, Because if you look at the windows it has one this <laughs> one windows has like five different privacy policies so that tells you how complicated and convoluted mm-hmm. the system is um it also so windows is a good example of that surface and deeper level tracking because you can opt out of the optional like telemetry and tracking but deeper in the windows privacy policy it says you must 
you you can't you can't disable these pretty much. And if you want them disabled, then you need to go use a different operating system. So yeah, sorry, I lost my train of thought. So what's an example of uh, something that Microsoft is recording on Windows that you can't control that you can't opt out of? Um, you have to send diagnostic data for a pro product improvement, mm -hmm. um, which fee which literally is how they define it. It's pretty much how the operating system works. And as far as I know, it's not anonymized um, because they tie it to the unique identifier of your Windows installation. And that then then we touch on the t topic of DRM software. Um, so they so they know that this information that's coming to their servers is from you. It's from this installation of Windows. It's from this device because it's. I found out the hard way that they tie it to like your UUID and your motherboard. Because I once had a motherboard fry in one of my machines. I replaced it with a different model. Windows was like, wait a minute, this is a different computer. And I'm like, oh, yeah. how would you what know you that? <laughs> Wow. It, it's actually it's in their privacy policy um it's a it's really long um i'm not it's not it's not a fun read well we all read them no. don't I mean, we all read the <laughs> privacy policies right or at yeah, least skim yeah, through yeah, it obviously. <laughs> yeah, they, they make them easy to read <laughs> yeah they make them so easy to read but it's definitely that fine print um to me it's really not that fine because they highlight everything that's required um yeah but when everything is highlighted everything is fine friend right yeah like i i believe they also um not i believe but in their privacy policy they gather information about your device too so not just about about the windows installation um so they gather drivers installed on your device so in a way not in a way they can easily link, okay, you have this model of HP printer. You have this number of peripheral devices hooked up. You have an iPhone, because if you plug your iPhone into your computer, that's associated with drivers, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you use these USB sticks, because whenever you plug a USB stick into your computer, it automatically downloads a driver. So they know everything about your whole setup. They know about your Wi-Fi data. Okay, th this 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 device regularly communicates with this device. Oh, they communicate on the same network. Oh, the host name is Ashley's iPhone. Oh, Ashley has an iPhone. You know, it's it's insane. Even the people that connect, say if you, I don't know if any of you guys let people hook stuff up to your machine. I hope not. No. <laughs> but that gets linked to you too. Yeah. But that's not anything you opt out of. That's the crazy thing. That that's required. Like they require you to send like um drivers um driver information. They require you to they they require the information about your Windows update. So they log information mm -hmm. from your device updating itself. So that's why I always say Windows is kind of like the biggest. It's the biggest culprit. Yeah. It's the biggest offender. Next. Well, I mean, Google. Next I've, to Google. Google's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna say Android Google phones Chrome. is pretty, pretty yeah. collective. So, would you say that there are some examples of how tracking can be used to compromise a person's privacy? Well, I think the Windows example is yeah. pretty. Um, yeah. I mean, so Android and Google Chrome. There's Android and Google Chrome, and there's Google Search. Um, mm -hmm. We can actually we can actually take Google Search for example. Um, okay. So, I, people might disagree with me, but I don't think there's anything wrong in search engines. Not just speaking about Google Search not logging queries, but measuring how much something gets searched. I don't okay. think there's anything wrong with that because it's an anonymous statistic. 
okay, so we got 5,000 searches in 20 days for, uh, for mechanical keyboards. There's nothing that ties that to you. Person. Right. But then Google takes that a step further. They say, okay, we have this keyword uh, and then they tie it to you. And then that's how you get the tracking because they are logging everything that you search and tying it to you. And you don't even need a Google account for them to tie it to you is a crazy thing. They'll tie it to your IP address. And then create um, like what's known as like a shadow profile. Yep. And that data gets packaged <laughs> and, you know, so sold off to the highest bidder who then gets it, does their own data collection. They might package that data and send it off to the highest collector. And before you know it, you might not have an account with any of these services, but they know who you are and they know what you like to do on the internet or they know how you like to use your device yeah. or they know who you talk to or they know where you go. And so with all this data uh, wandering around, would you say that this also would tie into the many data breaches that ha have happened? Absolutely. Look at the T-Mobile. The T-Mobile breach yeah. is the, really the most recent and biggest example because T-Mobile collects well, all, it's not specific to T-Mobile, yeah. right? But all the uh, the cellular data telecom providers, they all collect a vast amount of information yeah. and they store it. But at least if you're going to store it, you know, at least secure it. Yeah, so they had, <laughs> what, six data breaches within the 30, three years? Something like that. And yeah. I don't even know if there were any real ramifications from that, actually, now that I think about it. I don't think so I, don't, I, I think... think I think the FCC said it was investigating, but yeah. I didn't hear anything. If they did get anything, it was probably like a slap on the wrist. and well, Probably like a $200,000 fine. Yeah, which is pocket change to them. <laughs> Absolutely. But it doesn't, it's no incentive to change. So, mm. so that they still collect the data and it still gets leaked. And you and I have to pay for it because our yeah. identities might get stolen or our phones might get SIM swapped or, you know, they might compromise and do full takeovers of our accounts, but you know, that's not that's their not problem. Them, that's yeah. our problem. So, but it's because it's literally because of them. Like they, we need your social. Yeah. We need, you know, we, we need all of this. Which I think it's funny how social security was designed not as an identifier, but yet we've used it for an identifier for so many years that it's basically becoming almost like public knowledge now. Well, yeah, pretty much. And look at the Equifax data the breach. Equifax, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like one of the that, largest data breaches and that was ever. just insane. Of such sensitive information. Like, that's information that can literally ruin a person's life. Yeah. Because you might not, you know, ever be able to recover from it. Mm -mm. All right. So going back to the ads. Um would you say there are any examples of companies using uh, tracking in a malicious way, kind of like to uh, control your behavior or to buy more than what you really want to buy? Absolutely. The biggest offender is Amazon. Yeah. The app, that's the biggest offender because I don't know how many people I have talked to and they're like, yeah, I didn't even mean to, you know, I, I don't have any money to spend. I'm not going to buy anything. And or goes and buys yep. $200 of <laughs> just stuff. And yeah. you're like, where did this come from? And, oh, I saw an ad for it. Yeah. Oh, I decided I could swing it. And I'm like, you know, did you, did you really decide that? Or were you nudged in that direction? Yeah. Because in a way, given the vast amount of data collection, they – they might know you better than you know yourself yeah. because they're looking at your habits, um, like how you do things, um, from where you do things, the time you do things. And they're looking at that. They're trending it. They're looking at it mm -hmm. from kind of like a over the shoulder perspective. Cause you know, they always say it's hard to see something when it's like through your eyes than mm -hmm. it is sometimes through 
third person's eyes or a second party's eyes, sorry. Yeah. So they're looking at it like, then, okay, you like to do this, this, and this at this, this, and this time with this, this, and this device uh, from this, 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 and place. Here you go. This fits that profile. This fits your profile. And you're like, geez, <laughs> I, that didn't even... Didn't even cross my mind until you I, showed me it. <laughs> yeah, until you brought it up. And you know, some people say, well, that's not a bad thing. That's how you get you know, exposed to new things, but every single time, yeah. now you're just being manipulated. So if, if that's how you make all your decisions is, oh, I saw an ad for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I've heard many examples of people who just say things around their phones and then all of a sudden they see an ad. Do you think those two are related to each other? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Because take take Android and iOS, for example. So mm -hmm. the personal digital assistants um, on iPhone, it's Siri. Um, how do you get Siri to listen in? You say the hot word is, hey, Siri. Yeah. And then the phone kind of comes to life, right? Mm -hmm. But then you also have to ask the question is, how did it know that, that you said it? That I said it. And it, that kind of infers that it has to have been listening the whole time. And it was just waiting for that, those hot, that hot word. And the same thing with the Google assistant. I think it's still, Hey Google. I haven't had an Android in years. <laughs> um, <laughs> same thing there. So would you say um, that all these companies would uh, share their data amongst each other? That's why you would see like an ad on Google and then the similar ad on Facebook and then similar ad somewhere else? I would say so. Um, I would say so because personal anecdote. Um, so, you know, football season just started. I think this is week two or is it week three? I don't know. Yeah. But so <laughs> at my office, the guys, they love, they every year they set up a fantasy football league. And just so to set the kind of tone or set the uh yeah to set the tone i'm not a i don't follow any kind of sports i uh, i don't follow any sports pages i don't even search for sports i don't care about scores i don't really care about the olympics like if it's a sport i don't care about it um i very rarely talk about it um because it's it's not it's not on my radar mm -hmm. so at my work we're not allowed to have our phones in the building we got to put them we generally keep them in our cars in a garage, but our cars are all parked near each other. Um, so they set up a fantasy football league. And then all of a sudden I started getting ads for, hey, you know, start your next league with us. Hey, football's around the corner, start a league. And I'm like, okay, well, I didn't, that, that's not personalized to me because I never searched that. But I my guess is that my phone was in proximity to, to the theirs yeah. and they're like, okay, well this person, this phone is next to this phone. They might know each other. This person's doing fantasy football. This person might want it, mm -hmm. but it's yeah. wrong. Guilt by association. <laughs> Pretty much um, <laughs> guilty until proven innocent, but I can't yeah. prove myself innocent because I can't scrub my data from the data brokers. So, yeah. So what do you uh, so what are some of the common methods that you use from tracking since you're talking about your fantasy football league fiasco thing? <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there's a, like, like I said earlier, there's a ton of different methods to track. Um, going back a little bit, uh, everyone's probably familiar with tracking cookies yeah. or super cookies. Um, yeah. So that's just one method to track, but you also have location-based tracking, you have social media tracking, you have search tracking. But I think the biggest one of all is probably fingerprinting mm -hmm. because fingerprinting simultaneously allows them to identify your, di your device and in some instances you using the device and your habits across different websites, services and apps and it's consequently also the hardest one to fight against because 
almost like the more you fight against it, the more you stand out to your mm -hmm. easier to fingerprint. Not might not be easier to track, but you're easier to fingerprint. And then through the fingerprinting, you're and then it's tracked because okay, this fingerprint was seen here, here, and here. So it's this person yep. going here, here, and here. So you can do it that way. Um yeah, it's kind of like a damn if you do. Damn, damn that you don't, <laughs> but you're better off doing at least trying to mitigate it than you are just trying to just let Jesus take the wheel. Yeah. So you're talking about a super cookie. So I've I've known that there are methods to delete regular cookies. How is a super cookie different? It's generally set by your ISP, your internet service provider. Mm -hmm. So it's set on their end. You have no control over it. So there's no way so to delete they, it. And... No. The okay. only way to delete it, and I say this in quotation marks, is to change ISPs, but they all do it. So yeah. you would just be jumping out the frying pan and into the fire. fire. Yeah. So you could mitigate that by using a VPN? Certainly. Um, and if you don't want to use a VPN, you can also mitigate it by not using your ISP DNS servers. Um, okay. And then you switch to a different D DNS server, ideally one that that utilizes DNS over HTTPS, which is just encrypted protocol, similar thing to HTTPS in the browser. And it doesn't make you immune, right? Mm -hmm. But it makes it harder for them to gather all that information about what you do on the internet. Um, and a lot of ISPs, I can't speak for like around the world because I know different ISPs in different countries, a lot of them do do like deep packet inspection and there's no way to really, there's no way to really defend against that. Your biggest defense is gonna be a VPN, but then even then that's kind of, it's kind of iffy. Um, Russia and China, they just yeah, no, controls they block it. everything. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, if they block it and you're still getting around it and they control everything, then you're kind of at their mercy. But it's always better to not be the low-hanging fruit, I say. Mm -hmm. At least be higher up the tree. Because so most difficult. ISPs in the U.S. aren't going to spend the resources to do a deep packet inspection mm -hmm. on the guy using, like, Unless a they VPN. Got pressure from, from the law government. Enforcement. Yeah. <laughs> But then that's kind of delving into a whole different topic, different topic yeah. outside of super cookies and ISPs. So. Yeah. so what are some other common methods to avoid being tracked on? Or is this all just hopeless that you can't fight against? There is, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, methods you can use. There's some set it and forget it methods and there's some behaviors you can change. Um, uh, the biggest thing I tell people especially if they can't get off windows is to disable all that nonsense, mm -hmm. whatever it is, disable, 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 disable. There's some third party apps that allow you to disable the deeper stuff. You'll never reach the same level of privacy you'll get from, you know, like a Linux distribution, like Linux mint or Ubuntu or Shubuntu or any of those, but it's better than nothing. Um, so there's, that mitigate if you have to use windows mitigate how often it likes to communicate with microsoft um use a use a, a privacy browser aka stay away from edge chrome and unless you're on if you're on a phone it's kind of harder like i was going to yeah. say safari but if you're on a phone it's kind of harder um mm -hmm. given how safari works on an iphone and you can't get safari on windows Mm -hmm. um so use a privacy browser ideally firefox because you can you can download firefox tweak it so that it's hardened and so that it's more private and you can really just forget about it mm -hmm. because Which, generally when firefox updates it won't override your um your tweaks or your settings yeah. so is, that's a okay. good Oh, what were you going to say? I was going to say, with the tweaks with Firefox, would you say that's a difficult thing to do or pretty easy for the average user to do? I think it's 
if you're following just like a guy that says do this 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 and this it's it, anyone can do it mm-hmm. um i always think it's important to know what you're doing instead of just following any kind of guy i don't care if it's on my website or a you know a totally trusted website or mm-hmm. wherever you should always you should know or at least have an idea of what is this setting going to do when you fiddle with it but it, it's easy to do it's takes 20 minutes out of your day and you know it's like you it's said, a wrap. set it and forget it set it and forget it um download uBlock origin and you sh- should be good to go like it'll block ads for you mm-hmm. um another kind of set and forget it method that's a little bit more advanced is if you can um set up a pie hole if okay. you if you can and if you can't then at least set your router if you don't use like an isp's router or a router that locks down the uh, admin settings Mm -hmm. to change those dns servers because it's going to go through your isp's first um talking about and go encrypted dns absolutely um, that's re- that really is set in, forget it, because you just tell the router, hey, use these servers, and it will use those servers. Um, alternatively, alternatively, you can set it on your device, but it's harder if you have a lot of devices, and sometimes it's impossible. Yeah. Um, but if you set it on a router, then all devices that connect to that network, it's going to go where the router tells it. Like that, that request is going to go where the router pretty much tells it to go. So... Um, so sorry for a dns that's like a dynamic name server which yeah basically points the computer to where the website is basically right right it so you type in hopefully you don't type in google.com but you type in (laughs) google.com your computer doesn't have a clue what google.com is so Mm -hmm. it says hey like i computers read ip addresses um so it goes hey I need an IP. I need an IP address for <clears throat> Google.com. What is that? And then it goes through the DNS system, and it then it forwards the request, depending on whether it's cached or not. I try not to get into those technical details. But then your computer gets okay. This is the IP address for Google.com, and you connect. And if it's not encrypted, it can be easily tracked and say, okay, Ashley went to site A, B, C, and D, and so on and so forth and start yeah. connecting um, the dots and yeah because even if you have so if you're using unencrypted dns even if in the browser you're using let's say you're force you're forcing https mm-hmm. i can still see where you went as a thing i can still te- i can still intercept that dns that request request yeah and I might not be able to see exactly what you're doing once you connect. Like I might not see, you know, the pages you click, mm-hmm. like within that website. But I know you connected to that website, and I can actually thwart your connection so you can't even get to that website, even if you're using HTTPS in a browser. That's that's why using encrypted DNS is so important because it it's kind of more than just the ISPs and everyone else kind of like eavesdropping on you because if you have like if you're on a public Wi-Fi and there is a malicious actor that's snooping that traffic on that, net- that network, because anyone can connect to public Wi-Fi, right? Mm-hmm. They can reroute, they can poison that and reroute that to maybe a site that looks like your banking website that you were trying to connect to. You enter your credentials and it's a wrap. They have your credentials and then a the nightmare starts. Yeah. So would you say that there's a benefit of being tracked? And if so, would there, what kind of trade-off would be acceptable for being tracked and your privacy? So, like, are there any benefits? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there's any benefits of being spied on, but um, I guess the biggest one would be it would be personalized ads. But and I say again, this because, yeah. because it's a double-edged sword. Mm-hmm. I say this 
I say personalized ads and people may disagree with me, but at the end of the day, people like receiving personalized ads, but you can receive personalized ads without being subject to the data collection Mm -hmm. that we're subjected to for using various websites and web services. Um, Another thing is, is also providing, I guess, telemetry for the developers so they can improve their product. But they don't need to track you, that's the thing. Yeah, that, that, that's they can the do thing. anonymized they don't... ways to... Absolutely. They do not need to track you. They do not need additional information. They don't really need to know that... It came from how your computer. You need... yeah. yeah, they don't need to know that. Like, if, if it crashed, it crashed, right? Yeah, okay, they well... didn't know what event happened to make it crash. And if you're a good developer, you can figure it out. Yeah. Um, especially if it's a service that you're paying for. That's always kind of blown my mind that you could pay for a service and they and then, still track the heck out of you. And then turn around and sell your data to make more And then money turn around and you. sell your data and then next year raise their prices. Yeah. See, the, like, the thing is, so now, uh, excuse me, uh, there is three schools of thought here. You know, we're, we're always looking at this as pres- personalization for, or tracking versus privacy. Well, right. the third school of, school of thought is, okay, this is personalization. This is my choice as a consumer to, to use this technology to my benefit, right? This is just part of the growth of technology. This is how technology evolves. Uh, and to me, I, I feel like the next step of the growth of this technology is, or the evolution of this technology is personalization without tracking. But it's kind of like, how, how can I do that if I don't know who the person that I'm personalizing for, how can I do this without tracking? Is there a possibility to personalize without tracking? And I'm looking at it from the consumer's perspective, not looking at it from a, from a business perspective, which, you know, we've been talking about, we keep, you know, business keep on pushing ads, but what about something as simple as, you know, Google tracking my YouTube history or my YouTube searches, and now they're recommending videos on a subject that I'm really trying to learn about. And if, and you don't know what you don't know, right? And that type of information that Google would push on me to kind of help guide me in the right to get better at the subject that I'm studying, for example, wouldn't that be considered as the good evolution of technology? And how can we harness that to our advantage without the negative side effects? Um, I'm just trying to gather my thoughts here. So give, like, I'm gonna just use your example, right? Um, you can suggest, so just go, so again, going back to search engines and searching, you can suggest related topics based on a given keyword, right? But you don't need to know that you don't need to go too far with that because you can easily, okay, this person wants to look up how to tie a tie or how to tie a specific tie. Okay, you can suggest how to tie a bow tie. You can suggest how to tie your shoes. You can suggest how to tie, you know, like, you know, those fancy knot ropes that they use in the military sometimes. You can do all, that's personalization. You can do all of that without knowing my location. You can do all that without knowing that, you know, I'm that, well, that's my chain of thought. You can do all of that without knowing all the intimate details of my device. You or can, me. or me, yeah. you can do that. Yeah, you, know, you can, that can be done. It's just that they go too far. So it's like, again, you got that surface level tracking, you got that deeper tracking. And so and that, that can be done. Like that, that can easily be done because you can do it based on the keyword. But the issue comes is when you're okay, you're like, okay, well, you looked up how to tie a tie from, Los Angeles, California. Then you looked it up again in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, and then you looked it up again when in Portland, Oregon. Like, how is that? How is that even contributing to recommendations on how to tie more ties? 
or how to tie a different amount of ties. It doesn't, but they're still, but they're still taking in the information. That's the issue. Because they'll take it. They'll take as much as they can, as much as you can provide. Right. But you're not providing, you're not providing it willingly, willingly <laughs> or in many cases, knowingly. knowingly yeah. Like your average person doesn't realize that they just don't realize that they don't realize the depth of it. And mm -hmm. it's not their fault. We all have lives, right? Like yeah. not everyone's a techie. Not everyone works in cybersecurity. Not everyone is a nerd. So to say that and yeah. <laughs> yeah, say that in quotation marks, but you know, not everyone wants to dedicate that kind of time or even have the time to dedicate it or even have the time. And it's really not their fault. So it's just like, it's kind of, you're moving, I guess we're moving more into the ethics part of it. Mm -hmm. um, because the company should realize, you know, we don't really need this data. Like we just need X, Y, and Z to be able to deliver a good product. Okay. Plus, we don't need A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. We don't need all of that, but they collect that because, oh, it's there. I'm going to collect it and I'm going to do what I want with it. Yeah. And even if you realize, oh, you know, I was looking up how to tie a tie and Google was tracking my location and they were tracking all these different things about me and my device. Um, I want to request for that to be deleted. Oh, well, you can't delete it because you live in the USA. Yeah. It's our property now, but then I generate that for you. So it's kind of, it, it's rough, man. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. And I'm not trying to sit here and say, you know, my way or my opinion is right, but it's just, it's just not necessary. Yeah. So you were talking about the government. So do you think there'll be ever a time where the government will step in and make regulations to limit the online tracking or do you think it's just going to be like the wild wild west and companies are going to continue doing what they're doing i'm going to my honest opinion i want to say i don't know because mm -hmm. it's kind of a toss-up um because a good example you can kind of look at that they are trying to regulate is crypto, but they're not doing anything about tracking. So mm -hmm. I think it's, be this is just my opinion. I think it's because they don't know what the hell they're doing. Like, I think it's just like, they're like, okay, well, we have all these benefits from letting big tech do whatever big tech wants to do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, our constituents are also kind of like getting, you know, they're oh, getting no upset idea. about it. And, I honestly, I could be totally wrong. I don't think anything is really going to be done that's meaningful until the people start getting so fed up, they protest and vote them out of office. Because mm -hmm. then they're going to be like, oh, well, we can't let this go on. I don't want to lose my job. Um, yeah. So we got to do something about it. But then on that same side, on that other side of coin, is the government stepping in going to make the problem worse? Yeah. It's, it's... Or is it going to create more problems than it solves? Because every, or is it, seems it like going every time to the be... government steps in, it makes things worse in most cases. There are some where it does make it better, but. Right. And I mean, it's just, it's just, a, it's a big topic. Really, it got to, a, it's getting, it's out of hand. Like, it, you've mm -hmm. created a monster. You've let the monster fester. You've let the monster yeah. feed. You've let the monster do what it wants. And now you're trying to tame the monster. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Um, Would you say that the government is benefiting from all this tracking? Maybe that's why well, they're I, not stepping in? I, I guess. Um, especially with the location tracking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's also the whole issue that politicians take money from big tech to kind of like shut up. Mm -hmm. There's also that issue. Um, there's also the issue that the 0.0001% in a way is more powerful than the government because they have more influence in a way yeah. because of the data collection and because of how they utilize it. 
because they can, in some ways, they can say, okay, this is proprietary, go pound sand. And so then that's when you get the government trying to introduce like build to kill encryption and stuff like that. Because in a way, the private companies are like, well, I don't have to, I don't, you don't, I don't have to do anything. It has nothing to do with me. So all in all, I just think it's a power struggle. But it's hard to say if they're going to be like, you know, the Google, you must separate into four different companies or <laughs> Google, you can't do X or Microsoft, you can't do X or Amazon, you have to, you know, you're a monopoly, you know, whatever. Um, it's hard to say if they're going to do that. Do you have any other uh, questions, Ahmad? Yeah, uh, so one of the things that we keep talking about is, you know, PII and all those data breaches and and uh, all the regulations that the government have put in place, like the HIPAA regulations or here in California, the CCPA regulations to protect our PII as an end user, as a consumer. But being in the industry, do you, do you foresee similar types of regulations being put in place to protect kind of like our our online al, al, our the algorithm that describes our online presence now it's not pii per se it's not name and address and phone number and things that the government really protects but it's kind of like your online data so for example the comp companies you know big data collects that information and sells it right and i have no control over that um and also some of that information is available online and people like yourself who are in your type of business are able to find that information, gather it, clean it up and present it. Do you foresee this, you know, the regulations evolving to protect this type of information in the same way that it tries to protect uh, uh, PII? So like, just so I understand your question. So you're asking, do, do I think the regulations are going to protect things that aren't traditionally considered PII, but that yes. in the world we're kind of heading towards in a way are PII. Yes. That's a good question, actually. Um, I don't, again, I don't want to say I don't know, but I think it's going to take, it's going to take some bad events i can say before they realize oh yeah this is this is something that needs to be protected um because that's usually how that kind of thing works like our pii our pii is protected because as it like name phone number and stuff like that's protected now because of really bad happenings that occurred in the past um or i think yeah that's that's really it i think it's I think it's going to take something like maybe the data, like this new PII that's not recognized that as PII by the government. It could be the event is, okay, some upstart startup company sells this to um, an adversary and they use that to maybe assassinate somebody important or maybe to hurt American infrastructure in a way where it's not just a little blip on a radar or something something to that effect. Um, because if you look at it, that's how we got the Patriot Act. I'm not saying the Patriot Act is a good thing, depending on who you ask, but it took 9-11 for them to be like, oh shit. <laughs> like, you know, we need to take OSINT more, serious, more seriously type, type thing. Um, I hope it doesn't come to that. I'm not saying that, I, you know, I, this needs to happen, but that's kind of how it's gone in the past. I see. So you, you're saying in order for regulation to take place or to move forward, we need to have a major event that will force us in that direction. Mm -hmm. um, and that major event needs to have a large enough impact on us as a whole, but not just on a, million people at a time or five million people at a time because those data breaches so far don't mean anything to push any regulation right it i mean because if you look at it not justifying it but look at it from their perspective okay a couple million people are dealing with identity theft so what 
Like what what are we what are we going to do to make that stop happening? I mean, people, you know, people will disagree and say, "Okay, well they can do this this and this and this," but it comes to a point where how involved do you want the government to be in your life? Also, um, I'm not. I'm not saying. And again, I'm not saying. Okay, like, you know, they're right, you're wrong, or you're right and they're wrong. I, I think it's like it's something that needs to be weighed and looked at on both sides. Um, I also think a lot of it is politicized, which is kind of what hamper an, another thing that hampers, you know, regulation. For a new PII, I guess we can just call it that, new PII, because it gets so politicized. Oh, the left, you know, they want to persecute us, blah, 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 so they won't do anything about it. Or, oh, the right, they get so much money from big tech that, you know, that, you know, they don't want to do anything. So it, it's too much finger pointing on the government level, too. It's like, okay, well, that guy's bad. And then they turn around, this guy's bad. And then nothing gets done until something bad happens. And then they both look at each other like, oh, oh, yeah, we, I guess we got to do something. We got to do bipartisan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Come on. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on and being willing to interview. Um, would you tell our guests where they can find you online? Um, certainly. You can find me at avoidthehack.com. Um, you can also find us on our two official social media pages. Any other page is a fake page unless an announcement is made otherwise. You can find us at avoidthehack on Twitter and at well, userfriendlyath at Reddit. Okay. And... Um... This will conclude this interview. And again, thank you, Ashley, for agreeing to come on and giving us many different wonderful tips. And hopefully our listeners have learned a lot and will take their online privacy a little bit more seriously. And they'll be all until the next episode. All right, goodbye. If you like what was in this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with others. For more information, to suggest a topic, or to donate, head over to simplecyberdefense.com.